From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your party in Hartford, Connecticut now, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Just a moment, please. Hello, McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Hi, Pat. Johnny, are you still in La Jolla? Didn't you get my telegram? Sure did, and I'm getting ready to leave for South Bend right now. In the company of a beautiful, charming, lovely... Now look, son, your vacation is over. Charming, lovely girl named Vonnie Lamar. Okay, okay. Now, will you... What? That's right. Thomas Renee Lamar's daughter. Does she know her father has died? Telegram for her arrived at the same time I received yours. You didn't show her my wire. No. She doesn't know yet that you think it might be murder. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Patrick McCracken. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lamar matter. Or was it murder? Expense account item one. I'm calling it item one, Pat, because it's really the first tab on the Lamar case. Previous expenses here in La Jolla were charged against the Jolly Roger case. Expenses for the vacation you promised me and have now so rudely interrupted. Item one, $9.60 for that long-distance call to Pat McCracken in Hartford. Now, what under the sun is Vonnie Lamar doing in La Jolla? Vacation? Same as I was trying to take. Now, tell me something, Pat. Eh? Uh? Has a claim already been filed on Lamar's million-and-a-half-dollar policy? No claim has been filed. Well, then how'd you know about his death so quickly? Luck, pure and simple. The insurance company is Tri-Mutual, big office in Chicago, headed up by Lawrence Comstock. Oh, sure, known him for years, good man. Well, he's written all of Lamar's policies himself, Got to know the old man pretty well. Uh huh. Personal friends, you know. Weekend golf together, same clubs, and both nuts about two handed pinochle. So? Well, Comstock had been Lamar's house guest for the past few days, and been with him practically every minute the old man wasn't at his plant. Was he actually there when Lamar died? Yes, yes. He was the one who called the doctor when the old man keeled over. Look, you keep referring to him as the old man. Just how old was he? Oh, not too. Uh, let me see. I've got it. Uh, he was 59. The doctor's name on her telegram was Wilson. You know his first name? No, I don't know. That stuff you'll have to get from Comstock then, South Bend. Okay. Well, at any rate, Johnny, he called me the minute the doctor pronounced Lamar dead and specifically asked that you be put on the case. Yeah, well, that's flattering. Okay, it looks like I am, but tell me something. Yeah? What makes Larry think the man was murdered? I'd rather not discuss it now. He'll, he'll give it to you when you see him. Our plane leaves in about an hour. No doubt you can be of some comfort to the daughter. Hmm? Her knowing that you're handling the case. Pat, that's the one thing I don't want her to know. I hung up, leaving Pat to ponder over that last remark. Wired Larry Comstock that I was coming and finished my packing for the trip back east. When I'd finished, I paid my bill at the fancy motel. And all I can say is, thank goodness it was on expense account. And I knocked on the door of the cottage next to mine. Yes, come in. Oh, Johnny. Hi, Vonnie. Any way I can help you? More than you have. You've been wonderful. Arranging the flight back for me. For us. Taking care of the things here. Johnny. That's right, for us. I'm making the trip with you. But you... I thought you said Hartford, Connecticut. And your vacation. Oh, the vacation's all over. Wouldn't be any fun for me to stay around after this. Oh, darling. And South Bend is along the way. I'd feel better if I kind of took you home rather than let you make the long trip alone under the circumstances. Maybe I have some business or something to attend to there. Darling, I I don't know what... Easy, honey. You made it so wonderful when Daddy couldn't get here these last few days and now that this terrible thing has happened, to stick by me this way. It's the only way I'd have it. You, you're so wonderful. All right, all right. Come on now. Come on, get your things together. I've called for a cab to the airport in San Diego. Come on. Oh, thank you, Johnny. I love you for this. Sure. 
I can't say I exactly relish thoughts of the flight back east. Much as I hoped I could be of some small comfort to the girl. Much as I genuinely wanted to. Such things can be pretty rough. Particularly in this instance. But I am an insurance investigator. And in a matter of this sort, a million and a half dollars at stake, the possibility of murder... Well, it's up to me to suspect everyone, whether I like it or not. Yeah, I sometimes think it's a pretty rotten racket to be in. Johnny. Sleep, honey. Sleep. You'll need all of it you can get before you have to face things at home. I wasn't sleeping. I was just thinking. And being so thankful that you're here with me. Honey, I wired ahead for a hotel reservation. What? Yep. I'm going to stay in South Bend a few days. You wonderful, wonderful... No, no, I'm going to be honest with you. I... I also wired a friend of mine, a... Well, a fellow with whom I do business now and then. So I... Well, anyhow, I'll be there for, for a few days and maybe more, and as long as I can be of any help to you. It's funny. Hmm? You know, you still haven't told me what you do. Well, don't worry about that now. But I'm curious. Tell me. It'll give us something to talk about. Did you wire anyone at your home about your arrival? Yes, Harrison the butler. Johnny. Well, uh, how, how about the doctor who telegraphed you? Yes, Dr. Wilson, too. Honey. Wilson, Wilson. Wilson. Edward T. Wilson. Not tell me. No. No, no. You, you stop talking and try to get some rest. But all... I'm going back to the lounge in the tail section so that you'll have nothing to do but get some sleep. Then you won't tell me. No. no tomorrow. Thank you, Johnny. No, I, I can, maybe. Yeah, rough. Very rough. I felt like a traitor to her. Well, we landed in Chicago at 10 a.m. and took a cab from the airport to the Lamar home on the outskirts of South Bend. I'd never before realized that the big industrial city with all its huge, dirty, sprawling factories had such a wealthy residential section. And the Lamar home on Parody Lane was one of the most impressive of all, set far back in what must have been an acre of well-kept lawn. In addition to Harrison, the butler, we were met at the door by the housekeeper, cook, upstairs and downstairs, maids, and a couple of other servants, all of them obviously in deep sorrow over the passing of the master of the house. And may I most humbly, for all of us, express our deepest sympathy in this hour of this... <laughs> it's all... Thank you, Harrison. Thank you all. I'm going to my room and we'll call you when... Uh, yes, miss? This is Mr. Dollar. Mr. Dollar. He is to be admitted to the house. Any time he... I'll be here, Vonnie, as soon as possible. And you know where to reach me. Yes, Johnny. Thank you. And now to get to work, whether I liked it or not. I took the cab to the townhouse, dumped my bags, then back to Chicago in the office of Lawrence Comstock, Tri-Mutual's representative. He was waiting for me. Well, Johnny, you sure walked into something this time. Thick one, Larry? You don't know. You don't know the half of it. The million and a half of it. You gave Pat McCracken back in Hartford the idea that Lamar's death might be murder. I think it is. I really think it is, Johnny. Why? Tom Lamar was one of the best friends I ever had. He should have been. Your commission on the insurance he was carrying was enough to set you up for life. Oh, no, Johnny, don't talk like that. Tom was a good friend of mine, quite aside from business. I sold him his very first policy years ago, and he was just a bookkeeper for Atlas Processing Company, earning $70 a week. And when he married Delise... Delise? That's his wife, who died five years ago. Oh. That policy was only for $2,500, straight life. So? Well, you know how little my commission was on that... But I liked him. I saw that he had a spark about him. That with the proper kind of encouragement, he could go places. And he did. Yeah, so I understand. I understand the Lamar metal products is a really big thing. General metal fabricators just bought them out. Oh? Yes, and Tom was getting all ready to retire. Spend the rest of his days having fun. Golf, fishing, winters in California, and summers in Minnesota, that sort of thing. And taking care of Vani, his adopted daughter. Yeah. Kind of worth taking care of, too. Eh? I know her, Larry. Met her in La Jolla, California. Oh, then you... Brought her back here to face the sad fact of her father's death. Why, didn't... Oh, yes, of course. The family doctor, Ed Wilson. 
I should have realized. He sent a telegram to Vani to the same place you were in La Jolla. She's a wonderful girl, John. You're telling me. But, Larry... Yes? Something you told Pat McCracken back in Hartford has led him to think that possibly Thomas Lamar was murdered. John. Johnny, in the years I've known Tom Lamar... Yeah? I've not only known him, but I've known his family. Well? And much of his affairs, personal as well as business. Well? His wife, Delise. I would have married her long ago if I'd been able. Oh, get to the point, Larry. Oh, yes, of course. And his daughter, LaVon, Vonnie. I wish she'd been my daughter, my child. Come on, Larry, come on, get at it. She's a wonderful girl. You said that. Oh, yes, of course. Well, there were things in her past, Vonnie's past, that even her mother and later her father didn't know about. But I did. For heaven's sake, man, get to the point. You too? Yes, me too. Yeah, me. The confirmed bachelor. Take him or leave him. Have fun. Forget him. Make a big... Come on, Larry. Listen, Johnny. Now, listen carefully. Dr. E.T. Wilson. Ed Wilson. An old friend of mine as well as Tom. Yes? It was Ed who made the last insurance examination. Four months ago. Thomas Rene Lamar was in better health than you are. After all, he was only 59, and he'd lived a careful life, taking good care of himself. Well, go on. We were sure of his physical condition. Sure of it. That's why I let him add to his already large policy. Larry, you've told Pat McCracken, and you've admitted to me that you think Thomas Lamar was murdered. Yes, John. Because of one man. Who? The one man who shared his confidences, business and personal. Yeah? Who was closer to him than even Ed Wilson or me. Well, who? One man who alone could be sure of benefiting by Tom Lamar's death. Oh, look, Larry, that bush you're beating around is getting bigger and bigger. It's so simple, John, so discouragingly simple. <sighs> all right, all right, Larry, all right. Take it any way you like. I'm here for two reasons. Because I'm assigned to this case and because of Vonnie. Yes, I know. Now, who is it you suspect? The man Vonnie is really in love with. Oh. I'm sorry, John. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, some stuff I didn't want to hear, but I had to. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>